guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brandon and you're watching Mon Comics. Uh, this video is Terrificon Day 2 Saturday and boy howdy do I have some stuff uh, I want to talk about. It's not going to be too long. Yeah, it's probably going to be pretty long, but I'm not going to go like crazy in depth with what I got. I just want to talk about what I got, who I got them from, who they're signed by. And I just wanted to convey the same feelings I did in the last video, which I really appreciate everyone tuning in, whether you're subscribed or not. If you're not subscribed and you liked it, wouldn't mind hitting subscribe and like. It helps me grow. But no, seriously, I really enjoyed everyone's comments, uh, letting me know that they enjoyed how I broke it down. It was just pure excitement and joy. And I was I was really, really thrilled about it. I was still riding the high. You'll have to excuse me. I sound kind of messed up. Last week, I thought I was sick from Terrificon. I wasn't. By Thursday, I felt great. But unfortunately, my wife came down with something Sunday, and it incubated, and, and now I'm sick. But I got to get this video done. It's Tuesday. It's going to take me some time to edit to drop on Friday. So I appreciate you hanging with me. Uh, before we get into the con coverage proper, uh, something crazy happened last Friday. Uh, the Community, Comic Book Community Awards uh, finalists were revealed. If you're not familiar, the Comic Book Community Awards were started by a terrific guy by the Brian, name of Brian LCS uh, to recognize YouTubers and, and their hard work and efforts. Uh, so there's a nomination period where literally anyone can nominate anyone. It doesn't have to be YouTubers nominating YouTubers. It can be fans of the channel. It can be family members. It can be your wife. It can be your kids, whoever. Uh, and then Brian gets a committee together, and they figure out who's going to the finalists, and they announce them. And um, Brian puts a lot of work into this, uh, a lot of money out of pocket. He does get sponsors to help. There are some trophies involved, and then there's also some comics and stuff they give away. It's a big effort. So, with that said, somehow, I mean, I was just watching just to see because I watched it last year and I enjoyed seeing new channels that I should go check out and seeing what they're doing. Well, I'll be darned if your boy wasn't uh, a finalist in favorite cat favorite channel in the 1,000 to 5,000 uh, subscriber tier and also best unboxing in the same tier. You got to check out, uh, I'm going to throw the names of everyone up down here. Uh, or over here on the side somewhere. Uh, these channels are people I looked up to, look up to people I've watched in the past when I before I even started YouTubing. Wonderful, creative people uh, uh, that definitely deserve to be in there. I'm not sure if I do, but it's nice to be noticed and recognized for you know showing up every week. I, I don't think I, I think I missed. I took one week off in my almost two years. It'll be two years in January since I started the channel. So. It's a lot. I'm giving up time with my wife right now. Other creators do the same thing, um, but we're passionate about it. We love doing it, and the fruits of our labor are, you know, you guys enjoying it and, and meeting other people within the community. So, with that said, here is the website for the CBCAs, and I'll also put the link down in the description. If you think I am worthy of either of those awards, I would appreciate your vote. But I'd also encourage you to check out the other channels because they're wonderful people. If I were to win even one award, it would be mind-blowing. It would be some kind of feather in my hat that I did something that people really enjoyed and I was noticed for it. So shameless plug, uh, other people are going to do it and I'm going to tell you why I think I'm good at it. I just care. And, um, I've had fun interacting with you guys for the past couple of years. So go check that out. All right. So Friday was craziness. You saw, I did a lot of running around. I didn't get a ton of books, but I did a lot of running around and got some important books. Saturday, I got up around 7.30. You got to remember I'm a dad who hasn't had uninterrupted sleep in like two years, so I slept in. Sleeping in for me is anytime past five. Um, so I joined um, Ricky, Big McFly, the comic guy, Mr. Akins of What's on the Comic Rack, and Ryan, the Colossus Collector. Went to a nice uh, little breakfast uh, restaurant. Now I want to tell you, I'm, I'm here to tell you about Terrificon, the aspects of it, the Mohegan Sun. You know, a lot of people might think, oh, it's in a casino. You're going to get charged, you know, crazy prices for the food. Now you can go to Michael Jordan's Steakhouse and have a $100 steak if you want. But the breakfast place, I think it was Tom's, uh, Tom's Diner, Tom's Restaurant, was wonderful. Uh, I think I paid $13 for Eggs Benedict with a side of hash browns and a coffee. Like, that's not bad. Um, I also had a burger the first night at uh, Bow and Arrow Bar. The burger was $10. That's not bad. And I'll talk about another restaurant in the Sunday video that I went. Um, actually, no. On Saturday night, I'll talk about it for dinner tonight where we went. But it was it was really pretty economical. Even though you're in a hotel, there's preconceived notions it's going to be expensive. So uh, we get there and we look at the table that our friends are at. So like Mike from Lunch Money Comets, Dan's X-Men Comics, Bruce from Up North Comics, uh, Rohan from the Absolute Game of Nerds. I believe JP was there too. They're having breakfast with Walt Simonson. Yeah, that Walt Simonson. Uh, 
they just, he was going to eat by himself and they said, Hey, do you want to join us? And he said, sure. And I guess they had a wonderful conversation. Uh, I didn't get to have breakfast with them that morning, but, uh, more to come on that on the Sunday show. But, uh, so then, uh, we're off to the races. Check it out. All right. Day two of the con here with Mike from Lunch Money Comics, Toy from Awesome Toy Box of Troy. How was the day one for you? Long. It was long. Lost my voice a little bit, uh, but awesome. Start off the day. Out. Yeah, let's cry out. <laughs> Start off the day with breakfast with Walt Simonson, so uh, yeah. it's gonna win. be a good day no matter win, what. Win. <laughs> it's a yeah, win. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna get some signatures, buy some books. A lot of celebrities today. I know. All right, let's go. Hey, boys. Tyler Maine just sent you a cease and desist order. <laughs> of course he did. I didn't believe you guys existed. We, we do. do. Here we are. We're a big man of your imagination. <laughs> I love doing Deadpool Wolverine. That's right. All right, found another community member, uh, Josh from Sasquatch's Comics. Sasquatch Comics! You might know him as Tyler Main Sabretooth. I believe in you. I <laughs> believe in yourself. How's, uh, you got here today, brother? Uh, I got here today. Let me interview you. This is Mon Comics, everybody. You all know who I am. And let me ask you a question. Do you know the first appearance of Sasquatch Comics? Was it an Alpha Flight book? Ooh, it's close. Give you a hint, it's an X-Men. X-Men 131. Yeah, close, X-Men 120. 120, all right, there you go. First appearance of Sasquatch of Comics. That's right. But the only appearance that matters is Josh at Terrific Hot today. That's right. So much and fun. he is a real giant. He's the real legend. I'm just a man. Wait till you see Colossus Collector. He makes oh. me feel small. Oh my God. So yeah, there was uh, some community members just getting after it. Now I saw Josh from Sasquatch Comics. I've been talking to him for a while. He's closer to Mike from Lunch Money Comics Neck of the Woods. Mike is uh, pretty good friends with him and we uh, we hit it off. He was a wonderful guy. You could see from the footage, he dressed up like a Sasquatch. He really looked like Tyler Maine, uh, Sabretooth from X-Men. Uh, so I had actually had a little claim sale before the, uh, we went away to the con and he got a couple books and I said, you know, it's only like 10 bucks. Why don't we just trade? And he's like, sure. So he showed up with two books in hand and uh, I was happy uh, to accept them because they're right up my alley. Uh, Marvel Comics Presents Colossus, issue 12 from 1989, written by Ann uh, Nocenti, cover art by Ron Frentz and Joe Sinnott. Um, so he gifted me this because uh, it's kind of um, appropriate, you know, because now I'm friends with Colossus Collector and it's got the man thing on it. So very cool cover. Didn't have this in my collection. Anytime I get anything with man thing on the cover, I'm all about it. So thanks for that, Josh. The other book I had seen, and it's one of those things you see and you forget about, but you would love to own if you're a creature guy, but it is Elf Thing number one from 1987. Uh, it's a parody of the uh, comic Elf Quest, which has like a cult following, um, but it's like a, a swamp monster, you know, just parody book. Um, so like Swamp Thing, Man Thing, you know, and it has this great uh, homage cover to Incredible Hulk number one by James J. Friel. Uh, so I thought that was really cool. Happy to, to take this uh, from Josh and add it to my collection. It's uh, it's a really cool cover. So thanks, Josh. It was a pleasure to meet you, dude. I hope we get to hang out again uh, sooner rather than later. You're not that far from me, so I'll come find you and Mike. All right, so my main point of focus in the morning was signatures. I had two books I wanted to get signed by Scotty Young, uh, so I found where his table was. It was off in like a side ballroom. Huge line. I think they said two to two and a half hour wait. Well, that's where I punched this baby again. Found my staff member, went to the front of the line, uh, saved me a ton of time that I could use at the rest of the convention. And uh, I got my two books signed. So what did I get signed? Uh, one that's really special to me because 22 Comics turned me onto the series and I, I love it, but it is Twig. So this is one that Scotty actually wrote. Uh, and it's a wonderful story. I love the dichotomy of the main characters, Twig and Splat, his little sidekick. So very cool to get Scotty's signature on that one. And then one I've been holding on to for a while that I wanted to get signed and uh, finally got to see him there. But it is Predator versus Wolverine number one. Uh, so I have a couple um, versions of this cover, but I like this one. I really do like uh, Scotty Young's Calvin and Hobbes-esque um, drawing style. And I thought that was just so cute. These are two little ferocious, you know, creatures going against each other. That looks so cute. So it was very awesome to meet Scotty Young. He was very nice. Let me show you this footage quick. Mr. Young, how are you? Thank Good, you. How you doing, buddy? So this is my favorite. 
like that story, oh, the dichotomy you. between splat and twig. Like, I love them playing. Them. You, you write man. so well, and I'm a huge Predator fan. So like, oh, I appreciate it. You make me buy modern books. So I am, Kyle's drawn. The, I've already written the second one. You have? Yeah. So it's already written. Kyle, I can't it's, wait. It's in Kyle's hands. It's now. so freaking cute. But uh, you, yeah, man. I collect silver and golden age, but you made me collect modern. So awesome, thank you, dude. dude. I appreciate, I appreciate you so that, much, dude. Thank you. So thank much. you. So yeah, another example where this pass uh, saved me. So as of now, between Claremont and Scotty Young and their line times, it's probably saved me five hours that I could use elsewhere, which was huge. And uh, like I said, Claremont, I had one book I wanted signed by him, Scotty Young too, so I didn't really abuse it. Uh, the next person I want to get signed that was there was uh, Jerry Ordway, who was responsible for this little ditty. You might recognize it. So my dad and I were big fans of Batman 89. You got to realize when Batman 89 came out, it totally changed the landscape of comic book movies. Um, you know, people, it went from a campy, funny Batman in 66 to rather serious. Uh, Michael Keaton, a lot of backlash because he had played Mr. Mom already. People didn't think he could pull it off. Crushed it. And Jack Nicholson is a joker. Uh, my favorite. Yes, Heath Ledger's great, but I just guess I grew up with Jack Nicholson, so I love him. So this is from 1989, script by Sam Hamm, who did the movie script, and art by uh, Steve Olaf, uh, John Costanza, and Jerry Ordway. So really nice guy, really nice to talk to about this. He, he was really happy with this work, and uh, I think the composition of this book's great. So uh, thank you, Mr. Ordway. Uh, really picking up the signatures now. Okay, so before the con even started, Bigby McFly, the comic guy, knew I was into something that's killing the children. And he said, I got these books you might want. And I was like, really? And what it was is um, Something's Killing the Children 1 through 10 repacks that were known as slaughter packs. So they reprinted uh, these issues. There was four packs sold, uh, you know, 20 books, five packs in each, each book. And um, it was amazing, beautiful artwork. And I said, I have to have them. So Bigby brought them. And then he realized that the artist was going to be there that did the cover. And that ar artist is David Mack. So I'm going to go through these kind of quick, but you can see I didn't get any footage because I asked him to sign all 10 issues. Uh, I just, they were so beautiful. I wanted him to make his mark on this and, and show, you know, just that I appreciate it. So that's a number one issue. Number two, they are just freaking gorgeous. Erica Slaughter on the cover. Number three, look at that. Works of art, people. The complete package. The story in these is, is awesome. The art is beautiful. Number four. Number five. I love his signature, too. Six. Just look at that. Very much like Daredevil with Echo. The first appearance of Echo. He did draw that. So number seven. I love this. Through the kind of like the, the monster's teeth or eyes, whatever. Number eight, very cool, very crazy, all sorts of stuff going on there. Number nine, and this is an obscure type monster that you see in the book. And number 10, I love this cover and I told him I really enjoyed how it already had like little remarks on it. Um, I didn't get him to do a remark, but really cool. So Big Me McFly, thank you for lugging these literally across the country. Um, and thanks to David Mack for putting your mark on these. These are a highlight of my collection now for my Something is Killing the Children run. Um, I don't feel compelled to get the original issues now since I have these. So I can just go from 11 on and uh, really pumped about these. All right. I had one celebrity interaction that day, but if it wasn't burned into my mind, then I don't know what would be. So Saturday morning when I was coming downstairs after breakfast and like putting stuff away and getting stuff, I get off my elevator and you got to remember creators, comic creators, celebrities are all staying at this hotel. So I get off the elevator and there's Mr. Michael Rooker himself. He's got his flat brimmed hat on. He's looking good. And I couldn't help it. I stopped him and said, Hey, Mr. Rooker, can I shake your hand? I'm a really big fan. Oh yeah. Yeah. I go, you were just a phenomenal actor in everything you do. And I said, listen, it's mine and my wife's eighth wedding anniversary on Tuesday after Terrificon. I'm trying to think of something special. So he's like, oh, he chimed right in. He's like, me and my wife have been married 45 years. That's awesome. You know, it's, it's, it takes a lot of work. I'm like, it does. And I love my wife very much. And we've ups and downs, but we're making it work. And uh, she was cool enough to let me loose on the weekend here at this con. So can I ask you later at your booth? I'm not going to ask you right here in the hallway. I don't want to be that fan. I know they're there to make money. Uh, does he have money? Sure. But I didn't want to be that guy that like, asked him to do something right in the lobby. Uh, so I said, can I come to your booth and maybe just have you film something for my wife for our anniversary? Yeah, come find me. Come find me. I'll do it. Cool. 
So all that other stuff that I just talked about happened with the signatures and stuff. So I go to his booth, finally he's there. Didn't have a huge line at the time. I hit it the right time because other times it was long. So I walked up to his handler. I hate calling people that, but that's what I'm going to refer to them to. It's a lady that's taking his money, telling you how much autographs, selfies are and whatnot. So it's $60 for an autograph. So this weekend I told me, told myself, I'm going to shoot my shot everywhere I go because I don't know when I'll be able to go to a con again with this caliber of actors, creators, friends, all that stuff. So I said to the lady, I'm like, listen, here's $60 for the autograph. I'm going to give you another 80 because I want to see if he'll film something for my wife. I asked him about it this morning. He said he was on board with it, but I'm just going to throw you some extra money to see if we can make this happen. She said, you're allowed to ask. It's fine. So I go over to him. I said, hi, Mr. Rooker. How are you? And uh, I said, I was the one that he's like, oh, yeah, it's your anniversary. Uh, where's your phone? Give me your phone. And he literally ripped the phone out of my hand before I could say anything and tried to FaceTime my wife. And I was like, OK, so phone rings. Does she answer? Tell me. Does she? No, she doesn't. Of course she doesn't. You've got this huge actor FaceTiming her and she doesn't. So but he did make this video in the meantime. Hey, uh, Anna. What's for supper, baby? I want Taryn. You hear what I'm saying to you? Taryn. And I want him. Now get to work. Get your ass cooking. <laughs> happy anniversary. Happy babe. anniversary. Yay, happy anniversary. I had him say this stuff. Uh, my wife loves uh, Yondu. She loved him in Walking Dead too in some older roles, but she loves what he did with Yondu. And we always joke, like, well, we're going to feed the kids for dinner. And we're like, they never had Taryn before. We'll give them Taryn. And uh, so I had him say that. So I can't say enough of how kind he was. He didn't seem bothered. He was having fun with it. Yet again, another lucky interaction with a wonderful, wonderful actor who took the time to make sure his fan was satisfied. So then my wife FaceTimes back, and I'll be damned if he didn't grab that phone out of my fast hand so fast and answered it. And he got to talk to her for a minute and uh, said happy anniversary. He held the phone up to everyone waiting in line for celebrity autographs and said, wish Hannah happy anniversary. So hundreds of people. It was a surreal moment. Um, my wife was floored, you know, floored, blown away, hair blown back, whatever you want to say. Um, so in addition to that video, I did get her a uh, wonderful autograph because um, we both, you know, I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. You got to love it. So it says, uh, to Hannah, love Michael Rooker, Yandu. Uh, he knew what kind of blue to use to accent his paint in this, and it was wonderful. Uh, he'll probably never see this video, but man, Michael Rooker. Thanks for being just a good human and making my con even more special than it had been the day before. Uh, you hear about this stuff happening, but when it happens to you, it just makes it really special. And happy anniversary to my lovely wife, Hannah. Uh, here's to the first eight years and a million more. Okay, let's get back to some comics. I stop by my boy Josh's booth and we had this conversation. All right, I'm here with Josh from Buzz Comics who always comes highly recommended from Mike of Lunch Money Comics. And I knew I wanted to get some books from him at some point. And yesterday I saw these books in his back wall. Hope they still be there today. What are you going to sell me today, buddy? Uh, some scary stuff, man. Scary, yes, spooky yes. stuff. We got some werewolf action going here. So first appearance and first we sold this series. First appearance and origin. Um, yeah. All spooky. Great Mike Blue cover. Neil Adams over here. Neil Adams, yes, sir. Two of the best. Uh, where can people find you? Uh, you want to buy comics or just do cons and stuff? I do cons. I do, uh, I'm in a couple of the Facebook groups. Okay. Um, so um, maybe eventually try to do some other platforms. But yeah, Comic Book Collectors Marketplace on Facebook. Okay, and then you That's just you do cons in like the New England area, I do right? cons in the New England area and also down um, sometimes the south. Uh, I was just in North Carolina where I'm originally from. But, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it, Connecticut, New Hampshire, um, Ma Massachusetts, I'm, I'm rolling, man. So well, I'll be around. Uh, as someone whose channel is based off Good Sellers, find Josh wherever you can and buy books from him. Yeah, much appreciated. All right, thanks, Josh. Yeah, so Josh uh, owns Buzz Comics. There's a lot of Facebook sales and a lot of con shows, but you could see from the footage I finally did. I sold my Werewolf by or Marvel Spotlight number two to my buddy Doug in my last claim sale, and I upgraded to this beautiful copy. So Marvel Spotlight two, 1972, written by Jerry Conway, Roy Thomas, and Gene Thomas. Cover art by the great Neil Adams. So this is just a really beautiful cover. Uh, interior art done was done by Mike Plug on this, who does covers in the later solo run. First appearance of Werewolf by Night. 
Uh, I bundled this together. Josh gave me a very fair deal. It's a very beautiful copy. Uh, mid-grade, a little higher mid-grade, I'd say. Maybe like a, a 5, 5 to a 6. That's what I think he had it quoted at. But um, I was missing this on my wall. You know, I got rid of that copy before the con, and I said, I really got to find a copy. And uh, it was uh, serendipitous that he had this one as well as uh werewolf by night number one the first in the solo series from 1972 also written by paul jenkins pencils by leonardo manco and cover art by the great mike plug i love mike plug i like how he draws werewolf by night i love how he draw man, drew man thing this is the first in the ongoing solo series so again beautiful condition a higher mid-grade copy um very pumped to add this to my collection so josh from buzz comics you're a scholar and a gentleman uh, the, the legends of your kindness and your books and your deals were true, uh, coming from Mike of Lunch Money Comics. So thanks, man. All right, bouncing back to another signature. Uh, another celebrity. Actually, I lied before. I said that was my only celebrity interaction. It wasn't. Uh, Kerry Jones. Uh, he is uh, a creature actor. My favorite creature actor right up there with Doug Jones. Weird they had the last name. Uh, he was a, a couple of the Predators in the movie Predators um that takes place on another planet where they're hunting the humans and hunting other predators he was black chrysanta in book of boba fett but my favorite he played ted in man thing werewolf uh the werewolf by night man thing version so this was uh series five issue one from 2017 a john tyler christopher uh, variant uh written by rl stein the great horror man himself and uh, yeah, Kerry Jones, I met up with him. Uh, I had a photo op with him on Sunday and I just said, I really enjoyed how he brought monsters to life and I really hope he reprises his role as man thing. Uh, I had this book signed that I bought off someone and I traded that book to Jeff from Comic Spa because it was this one's in better condition. And I just wanted to get the experience of him signing it myself. And I had him sign it to Brandon, Brandon, you know, Kerry Jones, man thing. So, yeah, this was great to have in the collection sign. And I saw him sign it. Really nice guy. Big guy. You'll see the picture. I stack up pretty well against him. I'm a pretty big guy, too. But he was huge when he stood up. So, awesome interaction with Kerry Jones. All right. I picked up two modern books there uh, that I really wanted uh, for my collection. I'd seen them advertised. And, uh, man, I had to have them. This is Hello Darkness number one from 2024. Uh, this has, like, horror fantasy mysteries uh for anthology like it's built like an anthology for a slew of great creators like rl stein francesco francavilla garth ennis uh james tinney the fourth and many more i wanted this for a couple reasons uh one is it's a jenny frizen variant and i really love her art and uh the other is that there is a story from the something is killing the children universe in here that i want to read i haven't had time to read these yet because i've just been trying to like compile stuff and get videos ready but it does say it is the uh, con exclusive limited to 200 and i got 117 out of 200 uh so i saw this as a preview for the con i knew i really wanted it and i can't wait to dig through this and the other book was another con exclusive i heard this story had come out from like some i think some of the comics codex channel guys told me uncle gary might have said like you know i liked nice house by the lake he's like did you hear about nice house by the sea so this is that one, 2024 from DC, uh, written by James Tinian. And this is exclu exclusive variant cover by Martin Simmons. Uh, just a wonderful, freaky, Salvador Dali-esque horror art. I don't know. I love it. Uh, so this was um, a limited uh, to 400, and this is 307. So yeah, I, uh, I knew I wanted to pick up a couple modern books, and why not get a couple con exclusives? They're beautiful covers, and I know I'm going to have fun reading them. So the community, let's talk about the community members because they were the true highlight. We kind of all like gathered around the three men in the basement uh, booth um, and just all creators kind of just kept walking by. Um, the one person I did find in line for Claremont signing was Los of Los's Comic Journey. We've been friends now almost since I started. Uh, he's out in Massachusetts. Uh, I hope to meet up with him, you know, outside of cons and hang out. Uh, just a wonderful human. We've gifted books back and forth and just click. We're both dads. And uh, so Los, huge shout out. So nice to see you and finally give you a hug. Well, Los opens up his bag and he's got a bunch of books for me. I couldn't believe it. I was like, what are you doing, man? And he's like, I just know you like the horror. So he gifted me Something is Killing the Children, number 25 from 2022. Uh, we've talked about the creative team before, Tinian, uh, Deladera, and Muerto. This is a variant cover by Ji Young Lee, and it's a 1 in 25 ratio variant. So if you're not familiar with uh, modern ratio variants, that means that the store had to buy 25 copies of the regular book to get one copy of this. And then they go 1 in 50, 1 in 100, 1 in 1,000. They've become pretty rare. So 
Really love this cover. Thank you for that, Los. Uh, loved this movie when it came out, so I'm very excited to read this. 30 Days of Night, Spreading the Disease, Issue 1. It's a retailer incentive cover A from 2006. Uh, written by Dan Wickline, cover art by Ben Templesmith. Vampires, sign me up. Uh, beautiful cover. So thanks for that one, Los. Uh, getting back into the EC. Well, ECS, Creepshow was a movie from the 80s, a couple of them. Uh, so this is Volume 2, Issue 5 from 2024. Uh, stories written by Saladin Ahmed, uh, D.B. Andrew, Tim Daniels, and Matthew Roberts. Covered by uh, Artyom Zoppelin. Topolin? I might be killing that. I don't know. But uh, it's amazing. Topolin. Yeah, so very cool to add this. And then he went into the Bronze Age. He knew I loved it. Fantastic Four, Fighting the Frightful Four. From uh, 1974, it's issue 148, written by uh, Jerry Conway. Cover art, art by Rich Buckler, Buckler and Joe Sinnott. So that was a really cool one. And then he got me with the monsters again. Marvel Team Up, 93 from 1972. Uh, written by Stephen Grant. Cover by Don Perlin and Al Milgram. I should have got the sign. Al Milgram was there. But I was just stacking up a, a good book, amount of books that you can see. So I just didn't think of it. And I also had like my signatures like focused on what I wanted to get. Uh, Zombie Marvels, number one. And Hyuk Lee, uh, variant cover. Um, I think this is a homage to like a creepy cover. Someone chime off in the comments if this is an homage. Stuff of Nightmares from 2021. This is written by R.L. Stein. Um, art by Al Kaplan. Uh, retelling of Frankenstein. And then also uh, cover and variant cover. So Carlos, dude, you didn't have to do this. I just wanted a hug, man. This really was kind of you. I can't wait to dig in and read a lot of these. And uh, for you to be this thoughtful and just bring these books to give me and lug them around. I appreciate it, man. So thanks, Lowe's. Till the next time we meet, my friend. All right, I'm going to throw up some pictures, talk about people I met right now. First one we got, Jim from Bronzeville Comics. Just a wonderful guy. He had picked up a Kid Eternity, number one, or first appearance of Kid Eternity. Beautiful Golden Age book. So thank you for showing me that, Jim. Josh from Josh's Comics. This little sweetheart. Uh, I'm say little because I'm you know bigger than everyone else, and uh, I wanted to meet him. He's such a great guy. We didn't have more time together, and that stinks. But uh, you can check him out on the Comic Book Canon. He is also uh, a, a news correspondent in the Comic Book Canon with Joe and Jeff. Yes, I met Joe. Joe was hilarious. I thought Joe was much taller because the way he angles the camera. But I'm just going to start calling him the Philly Pitbull because he was built like a Pitbull. I'm hoping to clear my $12.87 tab by shouting out Jeff and his wonderful fiance Alicia. Jeff is the other half of Comic Book Canon. They did charge me to hang out with them and for to tell people they were, you know, I was their friend. So I appreciate that, guys. Hopefully this clears my tab with you. Also met Tessa is a nerd. Tessa, I've seen, I follow. She has great uh, content on not only YouTube but Instagram. Uh, she keeps her finger on the pulse of all the current stuff, uh, but also, you know, has a love for the old books too. And um, she's a very successful business person in the comic world. Uh, I'm actually going to have her on a show in September, so stay tuned for that. Tessa, thanks for being so kind. She hung out and talked comics. She does her press and cleaning. Showed me a recent Fantastic Four, I think X-Men 1, and maybe a Journey into Mystery 83 that she had cleaned. So that was uh, amazing. And then I got this beautiful man, Cliff on Comics. Another a another finalist in the CBC Awards. I was FaceTiming my daughters uh, when Bumblebee was like in the main lobby, like the big Transformer, because they love that stuff. And he comes up and just bear hugs me. And he's like, oh my God, I, I thought you were live streaming and you were talking to children. I didn't know what was going on. I'm like, yeah, those are my kids. Um, so Cliff, what a sweetheart. It was so nice. Thank you for coming and give me a hug and stopping me. And he will be on the show in September for the Big Vive Live too, which I'll talk about more at the end of this video. And then this was uh, a great person to me. I knew he was going to be there. He said he was going to find me. This is Andrew, better known as Comic Fanatic 86 on Instagram. My channel has always been about helping you, the viewer, find good, reliable sellers, and they don't come much better than Andrew. So let me show you what I talked to him about. All right, my channel. I'm here with Andrew, Comic Fanatic 86 on Instagram. One What's of the on, first guys? people I started buying comics from. It's been a while. It's been and, a while. And, and he set the bar high you. because you. your packaging. You know, you use those boxes with a great bubble wrap. You don't yep. skim. Your that's, sales. Oh, go ahead. That's the one thing that I, I I always want to. I want the comics to get there how they were when I sent. You know yes, what I mean? Like, yes. I want the packaging to be as best as I can. Yes, and you do. And the great thing is being able to. You're like clockwork. Okay, Tuesdays and Thursdays you're having your sales. Except this week because I'm right. Here, he's I'm here. here. But what else I loved about you too is that you know you're like, oh, just send me the money for the books and build a box. And that's yeah. really, I don't think people understand like how organized you have to stay to build boxes for people. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I literally have boxes and boxes of books that are on hold just because like, 
you know, I, I, I want people to save on shipping if they can. And yeah. 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 Well, I'm so glad I was able it's to find the tall, man. I realize how tall you are. I'm always sitting down. Yeah, wait till you see Colossus Collector. Oh, he yeah? makes me look small. <laughs> All right, so I just got to interview him. Andrew, so good to finally meet you. Dude. You too, man. You All too. Right. Find him on Instagram, Comic Fanatic 86 sales Tuesdays and Thursdays. Awesome books. You won't be sorry. Thank you, guys. So that breaks down uh, the con footage for that day. Andrew, thanks for the interview. I'm going to have him, I'm hoping in September to work on a date to have uh, my celebrated seller series. I've got some lined up that I want to do and get back on track with that. But Andrew's a really kind guy. It's been great knowing him for a couple of years and having a reliable source to get books through. So that was the con stuff. So after that, we matriculated. We were all kind of split up. So, and every restaurant was getting busy. Uh, Shane Gillis was doing a show there that night. So I was with a group of us and we went to Bobby Flay's Burger Place and uh, they were wonderful burgers. And I said, you know, we're not going to be all sit together. It's people were getting there in time. The line was getting big. So we went through like five of us ate and the rest of the group came behind us. So by the time we were done eating, we could get up and give them our seats because it was kind of like a first come first serve. So my buddy Troy from Austin Toy Box to Troy, I'm like, let's go to the bar and have a drink while we wait for them to finish dinner. Sure. So we went and sat down and I turned to my left and there's Carrie Jones, the actor that played man thing that I had gotten the signature from earlier. So I didn't want to bug him, but I didn't want to show him an act of kindness, if you will. So I bought his next martini. I waited for a bit and I heard the guy serve it to him. He said, it's on the gentleman next to you. And he looked over and I was like, everyone gets one, Ted. <laughs> and he's like, thanks, man. And I, I wanted to leave it at that. Like, I don't like bugging celebrities when they're just trying to have their time. Buy him a drink. Keep it that. He was the one that started telling me about conversation about, you know, he owns an effects studio and what he's working on, what's coming out, um, different stuff that he was excited to be parts of. And he's a very diverse uh, business person in the Hollywood atmosphere. And I was really grateful. He took this picture with us. Uh, it was really kind of him. Uh, he didn't have to, but, you know, like we were like, we don't want to bug you. And he's like, no, no, I like talking to people about this stuff. So Mr. Jones, again, and it was a great, you know, like going from the Rooker, um, you know, happenings to this, it was just like serendipity, like just like it all came together. So me and Troy were riding the high from that. And that's when we had heard that the three men in the basement were doing a lot of their live stream that night. Literally, uh, check this video out. They were doing live streams from different floors and they were having creators up uh, to show what they picked up at the con that day. Otto was leading the charge, but of course, uh, Dave Chinmo and Roger were there. So check out this video of Mike uh, going live with them. Yeah, I love them. Argo Comics, and it was honestly one of the highlights of the entire. Did he say anything that he thought about canceling? Like, you got sick? Did he mention that at all? He did. We did talk about Louise. Yeah, you know, he talked about her getting sick and stuff. You know, they had a lot vacation. They had a lot going on. And, no, no. And everyone misses her. She's so she's awesome. She's amazing. I have something for her to sign. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's fantastic. But uh, no, we did talk a little bit about that. But honestly, you know, we bought him his breakfast. We all checked in for him. He was oh, very really? thankful. Yeah. And, uh, so yeah, just a real cool thing that they, you know, set up shop, did a live stream. Adam Hughes actually was staying on that floor and came out of his room and kind of just walked by us. You could tell he was probably like nerds. Uh, but uh, Otto was like, hey, you having a good time, Mr. Hughes? And he says, my agent's telling me, tells me I am. So very good sense of humor. He's very kind about it. Um, so it was really cool that they host that live stream. Again, three men in the basement. Check them out. Thank you guys for being so kind and doing that live stream. And the night ended at the cigar bar. Uh, that was our second night in a row. Colossus Collector is big into cigars. I enjoy cigars. I don't have them often, but if there's a cigar bar serving drinks, check out this footage right now. You can see I kind of tried to pan around. They had this room where you could sit, uh, you know, in leather chairs or tables and have your cigars. And then they had a bar connected to it. So it was really nice. A few of us went there every night, particularly me and Colossus Collector. Really nice to unwind and end the day like that. So that was my my terrific con day two. It just continued with the craziness of Friday. I was just like the amount of adrenaline and endorphins and, and everything that was just running through my body of how much fun and how kind everyone was, was just blowing me away. Um, it was really, really cool. And I have one more day to talk about. Sunday's video is not gonna be as long, but there was some important stuff that I did that day before we took off and started the sadness so it's enveloped us all since then uh so yeah you might have heard me mention it big five live september 20th at 9 p.m eastern standard time i think it's september 20th i'll put i'll correct it with a date here if it's not uh but it's a terrific con exclusive it's all people that were terrific con with me so i've got cliff on comics i've got noah of broke boy comics 
I've got Justin of No Good Comics and Tessa of Tessa is a Nerd. I reached out to them all. I said, hey, guys, it would be really fun to do this like little reunion show in September and talk about Trivicon Shower Books. And they all said, absolutely. So stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for um, the next and last final Trivicon video. Guys, thanks for hanging out so much. Uh, I really appreciate it. I've, your support, whoever nominated me for the CBCs, like, thank you. It means a lot to this dad in the middle of nowhere in upstate New York. Uh, so yeah, guys, I hope you have a great, safe weekend. Stay tuned for more videos. Uh, and until next time, keep reading those comics.